And that is why you should clean out your new radiators because yeah. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. This is part two in my series of building my first ever custom water cooling loop. Now in this video, I'll be showing you how I cleaned and prepared all the parts as well as tested for leaks. Now I should have already posted part one where I went over all the parts that I picked. If you are interested in that, you can click on that little pop-up bubble thing at the top. I'm still gonna be releasing a part three. That'll be the final part and that's gonna be the review where I'll be doing the temperature and noise testing along with all the other cooler review stuff I typically do. Now, as always, if you do have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I do try to answer all questions. Back in part one, I did say that I tried to keep costs down as much as possible without going dirt cheap. And so far I've spent around 275 Canadian dollars or 220 American, but I still need to add fans and add coolant. However, to properly clean the components, there are still a few things we'll need. I'll have a full list of everything I used in the description, but I'll also quickly list everything off. You'll need distilled water, vinegar, preferably distilled vinegar, but I'm gonna be using cleaning vinegar because I couldn't get any distilled vinegar at a reasonable price with where I am at. You'll need a clean glass measuring cup, a microwave, a clean bucket, a towel or some rags, a clean set of funnels, at least two G-quarter stop plugs, some spare soft tubing, plus suitable fittings for that soft tubing, access to a power supply, and a way to jump that power supply. And of course, you'll need your water cooling components. Now, as far as I can tell, we'll need around 300 millimeters of vinegar mixture per 120 millimeters of radiator. My radiator is 240 millimeters, so I'll be making around 600 milliliters of mixture. Now, the vinegar mixture should be around two and a half to 3% acidic acid. So if you're using distilled vinegar, which is 15%, you should be able to put in a little less vinegar and put in a little bit more water than what I'm doing here. To make this mixture is simple, we'll need the distilled water, vinegar, glass measuring cup, and a microwave. Now, because I'm using cleaning vinegar, I'm gonna start off by measuring out 450 milliliters of distilled water into the glass measuring cup. I'm then gonna put that measuring cup into the microwave for two minutes. When the microwave is done, remove the measuring cup. Now the water should be hot, but not boiling. I'll now add 150 milliliters of the cleaning vinegar into the glass measuring cup. Now I wanna make this very clear. This mixture is just for the radiator. Do not use this vinegar mixture on any of the other components because it is possible for this vinegar mixture to damage the o-rings and the acrylic of other components. I have warned you. Now before you start pouring the mixture into the radiator, you should lay down your towels or your rags over your workspace so you don't make a giant mess. I rolled up one of my rags to prop up the fill side of the radiator. So when filling the radiator, gravity can help me out a little bit here and slowly pour the vinegar mixture into the funnel. Once the radiator is filled, I'll screw in both stop plugs, then pick up the radiator and give it a good shake for 60 seconds or so. Once I'm done shaking the radiator, I'm going to let it sit for around 10 or so minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes now, so I'm going to pick up the radiator and give it another shake for 60 or so seconds, and then I'll empty the radiator into my bucket. As you can see, there are a lot of little bits of stuff coming out of the radiator. This stuff is a bunch of things. It can be anything from soldering flex to dust to flex of metal. Now, I'm not sure how well the camera's picking this up, but the mixture now has a uh, bit of a blue tinge to it. This is most likely from the coolant they used in the factory to pressure test the radiator. They just didn't clean it out all that well after. Now, I'm just going to keep repeating this process until I don't have any mixture left. Uh, there should be a, enough for around four to five rinses of the radiator. The only difference I'm going to probably do here is on the second to last rinse, I'm actually going to let the radiator sit for like 60 or so minutes just to let the vinegar mixture really kind of get in there and try to clean everything that it possibly can do. 
and there's a pretty good chance that during that time I'm going to like flip the radiator. I'll probably have some b-roll of this as I'm doing it. Uh, just kind of flip the radiator every 10 minutes just so that gravity can have just so that like I'm getting all the little nooks and crannies of everything. Okay, so I have gone through and used all the vinegar mixture. Uh, what I'm going to do now is you don't have to do this, but uh, this is kind of just to show you that it's always a good idea to rinse this stuff out, is I'm going to pour the contents of the bucket through a coffee filter to then kind of show you the amount of nasty gook there is in a radiator. And that is why you should clean out your new radiators because yeah, that's some pretty nasty crap. So once you're done with the mixture, it's really important to properly rinse out the radiator with distilled water because there are still trace amounts of the vinegar mixture in the radiator, which if it's not properly rinsed out, the acid of the vinegar can actually damage the loop and or the radiator itself. But before we can clean out the radiator, we're gonna need to rinse out the measuring cup, the funnel or funnels, the stop plugs, the bucket, i.e. everything we just used. I just rinse them off with tap water and then dry them with a clean rag. Again, try not to overfill the radiator. Again, give the radiator a good shake for 60 or so seconds. I'm gonna let it sit for two minutes or so. So two minutes is now up. I'm going to give it another quick shake only for a few seconds here and then I'm gonna pour the water into the bucket. I'm gonna do this one more time before moving on to the next step. Now the next step is to actually run water through the radiator. I'm just gonna use gravity to do this, but there are some other ways to do this that use less water, but they will involve getting some additional things that I don't have, and that's why I'm just gonna kinda do the gravity fed one. So I'm going to attach two soft tube fittings to the radiator, then I'm gonna fit sections of soft tubing to each of those fittings. I'll put one of the tubes into the bucket and then I'll stick the small funnel into the other tube. I'll fill the measuring cup with distilled water, so this is going to take a fair bit of water here. I'll pick up the tube with the funnel in it, making sure to lift it above the top of the radiator. Then I'll slowly pour in the distilled water and thanks to gravity it comes out the other side and down into the bucket. I'm now going to lift the radiator up, doing my best to keep the tubes over the bucket and let gravity drain the radiator. Now that the radiator is mostly empty, I'm going to remove the fittings and tubes. I'm just gonna give it one last tip over to try to get out as much water as I can. Now I'll place the radiator thread side down against the bucket just to let all the water drip down. And that's how you clean a radiator. It does take some time, but it is pretty simple. Now in the case of the pump and any blocks, the cleaning process is much simpler because we're really just trying to make sure that there's no dust in them, so we don't need to be as thorough. I'm going to clean out the CPU block next. I start by just adding 100 milliliters of distilled water into the measuring cup. This time I'm going to put the funnel into the import of the block. Again, securely holding the funnel with one hand and slowly pouring the distilled water into the funnel. Try not to overfill the block. The block really doesn't hold much water. It only holds like 10 or 15 mils. So it really does not take very much here. Once the block is filled, screw in the stop plugs, pick up the block and just give it a quick shake, unscrew the two stop plugs and pour the water into the bucket. Now I'm going to attach the fittings with the tubes on them to the block here and pretty much just kind of prop the block up onto some boxes so it's higher up. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the radiator is just run water through the block down into the bucket. I'll tip the block upside down, shaking out all the little bits of water. I'll then take off the fittings and just kind of shake out the block a little bit more. Then I'll place the block upside down on my rags just to let the water drip out. Moving on to the pump. Now depending on what pump and or how your pump and res connect to one another, this process might be a bit different than what I'm about to show you. I have a pump and res combo so that they actually the reservoir screws into the pump. Now I started by removing the res from the pump. Now I did this off camera, but I simply just wiped down the reservoir and the top of the pump with a wet paper towel. I then placed the acrylic res off to the side. 
Now, because of the shape of my pump, I'm going to attach the fittings and tubing to the in and out port of my pump. I'll stick the funnel into the tube that leads into the in port and then have the out port lead into the bucket. Now again, this is just to get rid of the initial bits of dust that's gonna be inside the pump. So slowly pour the water through the pump. What I'm gonna do now is remove the fittings from the in port and put the res back on. So what I've done is looped the tube from the out port of the pump into the in port of the res. So I'm gonna fill the res up here just a little bit and then power on the pump and let that run for 10 or so seconds. Now that water looks quite cloudy, which is to be expected. So I'm going to empty that out. Now I'm gonna pour in more water into the top of the res. I'm going to power on the pump this time for I don't know, 30 seconds-ish. Then we'll see how cloudy the water looks. Okay, that water looks much clearer. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just actually gonna to top up the res here and then power the pump back on, this time for probably about two minutes or so. So this looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna empty this water out and then fill up the res one last time and again run it for like two minutes or so. This looks pretty good, the water looks pretty clear. Now what I'm gonna do is assemble the whole loop to check for leaks. Now I'm gonna do this not attached to a system because I've never used these fittings or tubings or components or anything before and I don't want to risk my hardware. So I'm just gonna kinda just assemble the loop in how you should be kind of assembling the loop but it won't be attached to anything. The whole loop is set up and filled. This time I'm actually gonna run it for like an hour to make sure that nothing is leaking here. Now the thing is, is I'm gonna be running this for an hour so I'm actually gonna how, now have to break out my power supply with the power supply jumper because I don't really wanna be sitting here for an hour letting this thing check itself out. What's up everyone? It's been a couple of days and everything went well, maybe a little too well. It's just a little weird, things don't typically go so smoothly for me. I'm half expecting the ball to drop or the other ball to drop, however that phrase goes. Um, well, I guess it is time. I'm gonna have to figure out how exactly I want to set the loop up on the test bench. I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna go, so that should be super duper fun. I should be able to get at least some B-roll of it for you guys so you understand what it should end up looking like. But that is it for this video. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see how a custom water cooling loop cools a CPU, then hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you'll get notified when I drop the next video. Uh, you can maybe check out these videos in the meantime. They should be pretty good. Also, please follow me on Twitter, at HFG underscore YT. I also have a Discord server. It is completely free. The link is in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.